uh, and welcome everybody. Uh, welcome to what every retailer can learn from Apple. And again, I, I would like to, I guess, give a little preamble to, to this whole presentation, and, and that is that this is not going to be, uh, you know, a, a presentation just showing all the wonderful, incredible stuff that that Apple does. Uh, although they do a lot of wonderful, incredible stuff. More importantly, though, is is, is the what we can learn. And so, as I go through the slides. I'd like every retailer that, that's on this call to say, okay, is there some learning for me here? Uh, you know, probably the, there's an old saying that, that imitation is, is the greatest form of flattery, and I'll show you a little bit of that towards the end. Uh, uh, if you try to knock somebody off completely, in other words, duplicate everything that they do, uh, it, it doesn't work so well. Uh, but there are a lot of things, and it's what I'm going to take you through, the elements that, that, that Apple has really nailed and, and made kind of amazing. For the fourth year in a row now, uh, uh, Apple has been one of the most admired companies in the world. And you look at that list that's on the screen, and, and they're a pretty impressive company, uh, you know, with Google and, and good old uh, uh, Berkshire Hathaway, uh, Southwest, Procter & Gamble, Coke, Amazon, FedEx, Microsoft, and McDonald's. Uh, those are some of the, you know, some of the absolute best brands on this planet. And... Uh, Apple has been there for uh, the last four years. And what has been amazing, amazing, amazing is, is their growth in, in both sales and profitability, but particularly around the whole concept of sales. Their stores, and remember, their stores just turned 10 years old. And the average store does almost $36 million a year. And, and again, the productivity of that, uh, and you, you'll hear, by the way, all kinds of different productivity numbers. Uh, you'll hear, uh, uh, you know, four thousand dollars a square foot. I use a, a formula that that retailers use, and that is selling area of the store, not the not the uh, total footprint of the store. So I don't take into account. Uh, the genius uh, ready rooms. I don't take the staff rooms into account, not the full footprint. I just take selling area of the store, which, by the way, also technically for an Apple store, it does include the stock room because they have to sell out of the stock room. So we do take that figure in. So using that number, they're, they're pretty darn close to $6,000 a square foot. And that from a productivity position puts them <laughs> I mean it, it, it's amazing they're they're you know I don't know five six times uh, what Best Buy is for example and, and Best Buy does some incredible numbers so almost 900 a square foot uh, they're, uh, they're they're way way above even Tiffany's so the, their productivity uh, is is absolutely astounding another thing that that kind of uh, uh, um, I guess amazed me about them was I looked the other day, and quite frankly, I, I, I hadn't been paying attention, I guess, for the last couple of years. Uh, but as of last year, uh, Apple corporate has pulled ahead of Microsoft in, in total revenues. So for last year, uh, uh, Apple finished at $65 billion in revenue, while Microsoft came in at $62 billion. So that was the first time that, that this little Apple company, <laughs> and by the way, they are no longer a little Apple company. They're no longer the underdogs. And even around, yes, Microsoft still controls 90% of the desktop software, but what I think they're looking over their shoulder at now is the incredible growth of, of the uh, Apple software platform. And we see that on this particular chart that there's been 18 million Windows switchers since 2004. And by the way, so in 2004, there were actually 18 million Mac software users. Now, adding on 18 million Windows switchers, uh, it is absolutely amazing the growth of of the the software platform so why are we here how do these guys do it how did they how have they done particularly in retail how have they grown so incredibly fast and and done so incredibly well well first and foremost going back to what we call the six rights of retail 
the right product, and we'll talk about that because there's some interesting things that you may not be aware of about their product that we'll talk about in a minute in the right place, and we'll definitely talk about that at the right time, at the right price, in the right quantity, and with the right level of service. Believe me, they absolutely nail every one of those rights. And they do it, again, by, by and we'll see this in a minute, exactly how they do it. They simplify the product offering. They, they're so, when you think about it, and that's the other thing I guess I'm going to be challenging you about in a few minutes, is to think about your SKU productivity, how many SKUs you are carrying in inventory. Too many stores today, my belief, are offering way too much choice. And we'll see it's one of the, I think, one of the brilliant, brilliant components of Apple is that they really narrow it down. They don't give you a lot of choice. And that, therefore, becomes incredibly easy for them to present their entire product line with a high degree of clarity. Also, the way they hire people, we'll look at some of their hiring practices, uh, clearly the people in the store, the sales associates, are absolutely incredible. And by the way, it's not just Apple that does that. I mean, I have to give kudos to an awful lot of other retailers out there. Container Store, for example, uh, have absolutely incredibly well-trained staff. Uh, Macy's, Macy's is even getting better. Uh, yeah, a lot of retailers are, are, you know, are doing better on training staff. But again, Apple is just absolutely astounding. Uh, they've got the right, what I call, Kool-Aid mix. And we'll also see their, another component of what, the, what makes their retail work so well is their, their absolute, I, I guess again I would call it brilliance, on suggesting, I'm sorry, uh, finding the right location. And their location strategy, once again, is absolutely brilliant. And then, on top of all that, just their layer of service, and, you know, on top of just selecting and finding the right people, how they execute that in the store, the genius bar, which really was, you know, my opinion, it was genius. And it really came out of, you know, if you look back at the old stories and, and, and Ron Johnson really understanding when he asked, you know, initially when he was designing this, this whole thing, he, he asked for customer service experiences. And he found from a lot of, of, of the people were talking about great experiences they had in customer service were at hotels. And what, he, what kind of dawned on him was, well, that was because they were concierges and they weren't really there to sell anything. They were just there to give information. And hence the, the birth of the uh, Genius Bar, which has been absolutely genius. And, you know, there's, again, a very old saying in retail, uh, probably older than the six rights, and that is that retail is detail. And Apple absolutely nails that detail. They don't leave anything to chance. Uh, you're seeing on, on the background of this particular slide uh, what they, this is a poster that was, that was up in, in a number of Apple stores, all Apple stores, as a matter of fact, uh, for their 10th anniversary. And it, and it was basically what they've learned over 10 years of, of retailing. And I'll be referencing a little bit of that as I go through the uh, presentation. But this particular one, getting the details perfect, even when our stores are big, no detail is too small. And once again, you really notice that, that commitment to retailing being all about detail. And then the other thing that they are, are, are very good at, and I think a lot of us can learn from, is that they really understand that it is about emotion. And they get not only their employees <laughs> uh, emotional and, and all charged up, but it becomes contagious, absolutely contagious. So when the employees get charged up, then the customers get charged up. And it becomes, once again, a very, very emotional experience. And as anybody will tell you, buying is an emotional experience. It's not about logic. It is about emotion. And then let's get into <clears throat> kind of the specifics now of, of what they really do well and, and what, <clears throat> what we can learn from them. First and foremost, I, I think that they, th their products are absolutely 
absolutely amazing. And as this quote says on the screen,